I'm Roger Smith, and I would like to welcome you to the Randolph Lucas Jones house. My late husband, Christopher M. Jones, and I moved to this house in 2013 from 2500 Peachtree Road um, to, from its original location to Ansley Park. And um, in order to accomplish that, it was uh, a little bit of an undertaking, and I'll be talking about that as we go through the interview. Um, I want to share with you the story of the move and how this came to be, the decisions that we made along the way uh, to do this project, and also some of the challenges that we faced along the way. Um, I'll start by telling you that my late husband was um, quite the salesman. Uh, his career was spent in city government and development. And so he knew the ins and outs of uh, city development and the way city politics can work. And I think that knowledge certainly helped us with this project as far as working with the city of Atlanta. There were a lot of moving parts for this project, obviously. And in a city, unfortunately, that is known for um, tearing things down rather than saving them, we wanted to show that even when it seems like it's impossible, it can be accomplished when we all work together for the good of one. And so that really is the core of the story to me, and that's the story that I would like to share. I think it's so important for people to understand historic preservation is our connection to our past. It's our connection to where we've come from and how our lives change through the generations. This home was built by Hollis Nicholas Randolph. Mr. Randolph was a very prominent attorney here in Atlanta at the turn of the last century. He grew up in Virginia. His great-great-grandfather was Thomas Jefferson. This house was copied after a childhood home that he grew up in, in um, Virginia. And um, the um, Randolphs had been in Atlanta, I guess about seven years before they decided to build this house in 1924 out on Peachtree Road. At that time, for those of you who know Atlanta history well, Peachtree Street and Peachtree Road were lined with beautiful homes on very large lots. Most of the homes sat back from the street. Keeping in mind that the streetcar was the primary source of transportation out Peachtree, and Buckhead stopped, um, I guess, pretty much right there where Roswell Road and Peachtree split. So these were considered homes to get away from the city, the hustle and bustle of downtown. And um, the house sat uh, beautifully positioned in the center of the lot at the top of Lindbergh Drive. As you, as you reach the top of Lindbergh Drive, there at uh, Peachtree Road. And um, the house was featured in 1987, a very well-known Southern writer, Ann River Siddons, used this home as the home base for her family um, in the story that she used to talk about the challenges that the family faced uh, during World War II and after. It was very ironic that in the book, um, Mrs. Siddons projected that the house would fall ruined to the age. And I believe that had Christopher and I not come along when we did, the house probably would have been lost to the wrecking ball. And I can look back and tell you now that there are times when I look at pictures and I think about the move itself and I myself can't believe that we did it and that we were able to accomplish it. But I can tell you it was done from the work and the dedication and the help of many, many people, not just the two of us. The story was never about Christopher and me. It was about the house, and it's still about the house. My mother lived with us for a period of time uh, from 2011 for almost two years. 
and we had a house on the other side of the neighborhood and so we needed a little bit more room for my mother to come and live with us permanently and so that was part of our plan in wanting to find a little bit larger house ironically enough one of the homes in the neighborhood that we made an offer on was the personal home of p thornton marie who was the architect for this house he lived over on lafayette which um, actually you can see that house from here there are five other residential homes in the neighborhood that mr marie designed you will probably recognize his work um, most prominently from the Fox Theater and also St. Luke's Episcopal Church downtown. Both very, very beautiful, um, exquisite buildings in their own right. And um, for those of you who have been in Atlanta a number of years will remember the fight to save the Fox. And thank goodness that was preserved because what a treasure and what a landmark that building is. Um, Mr. Marie also designed the train terminal, which stood where the Richard Russell building is now. And he built almost the identical terminal in Havana, Cuba. And we talked at the time about how tragic it is that it was no longer, that the, the train terminal in Atlanta was no longer standing uh, because what, a, what an incredible loss. Um, we wanted to show several things as it relates to historic preservation. Number one is perseverance. Christopher had more tenacity than any 10 people you would ever meet um, and did not take no for an answer, and, uh, which served us well. <laughs> um, but also working with others for a common goal and the common good. And it was very, very meaningful when people would come on site to do work in the house. We could tell almost immediately whether they were really passionate or whether they were just here to collect a check. And there's a big difference there because when somebody is giving something their heart and their soul, it shows. And I believe it shows in the finished product of the way the house looks now. I've lived in the house now for a little over a year and a half. The complete process, start to finish, took us a little over five years. Now that sounds like a long period of time, and that was the number one question for a long period of time was, when, when is the house going to be finished? And so we decided to just start saying, we'll be done by the holidays. And people would say, well, what holiday? And uh, <laughs> whatever holiday was coming up next, be it Groundhog Day or Valentine's Day or Christmas or Thanksgiving. And uh, that was, it was a, a little joke um, with us and, and with our close circle of friends. And they, they would laugh and, and tease us. And, you know, we would just keep forging ahead. There were a lot of twists and turns. And what I can share is the the process that we thought was going to be the most difficult and, and really was what kept us up at night was the physical move itself because that was, that was quite an undertaking. In order to accomplish that, we had to deconstruct the house, meaning we took all of the brick off the house, we took all of the slate off the roof, we had a man come in, and it was only two people that did this process, which is difficult to believe, but they cut around the top of the baseboard all the way around on the second floor to release the second floor from the house. We butterflied the roof down, so the third floor went away, and we had to clear, I believe it was 19 feet on the power lines to get it down. Peachtree. We also had men that were on both sections of the house as it came down, lifting the lines with poles and passing them back um, so we could get under the uh, traffic lights. That was quite a night for sure. Um, on a Friday night at 12.01, the time clock started and the second floor pulled off onto Peachtree first 
and then the first floor followed. It took us approximately seven hours to get from 2500 to the front of the High Museum, which I'm sitting in the living room and the High Museum would be right across the street. One museum place, condominiums, is immediately behind me. John Whelan, the developer, allowed us access to cross that lot to bring our house to this lot to put the second floor back on. We brought the house in and pivoted the house around to make sure our setbacks matched the houses that were on either side of us. We were fortunate in the fact that there had been a house on this location and when Mr. Whelan um, tore the house down, they did it from the back. So we were able to save the landscaping in the front. It has served us well because I believe that the house fits in nicely on the lot. The greatest compliment that I can hear is for people to say, I couldn't find it. I know it's over there somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Where is it again? Um, so mission accomplished on that because we wanted it. It was very important that this house be at home in this neighborhood. Um, Ansley Park was being developed around that time. For those of you that are familiar with this neighborhood, the streets were very wide. They were built wide because there was still horse and buggy and they were not sure if this automobile thing was gonna take off or not. So they wanted to allow enough room for the automobile and possibly a horse and carriage. So I think that's a pretty cool story as well. So that's one reason. Um, we wanted the house to fit in in 1924. There were other houses being built in the neighborhood, certainly around uh, very close to here. So one thing that was very important was finding a compatible neighborhood. We feel like we fit the bill with that most definitely. As a side note, I would say it is um, concerning not only in Ansley Park, but in all of our neighborhoods throughout the city, new infill is coming in. And time marches on and trends and styles change. And as my mother used to say, it's good we don't all like the same thing. And she would leave it at that. And I would agree with that because I grew up in a house very similar to this um, with uh, Virginia Tidewater, um, classic Georgian, um, look. A lot of the furnishings that are in this house were in my mother's house. The chandelier that you see behind me was my grandmother's chandelier that hung in her dining room. It hung in my mother's dining room and now it hangs in my dining room. So I have to tell you that this is my cloister. This is my safe zone. And when I come in this house, the warmth and the love that I feel is really what has helped get me through these strange times we're living through right now. This is my cloister. This is my respite away from the world. Not a bad place to be sequestered for a period of time. One thing I want to mention is before we actually moved the house, the house had been moved once before from the center of the lot to the front left corner of the lot on Peachtree. At that time, the condominium association opened the house up. There was a caterer that operated um, the home as a special events facility. It was during this time that there were many weddings, wedding receptions, dinner parties, birthday parties. So there are definitely a lot of good, fun times that have transpired in this house. And one thing that kept us going when, when we would hit a rough spot in the road, inevitably we would get a note or, or we would get a, a message on social media from somebody saying, I came to a party at that house in 19, whenever it was, and it was so beautiful and it was so much fun. And just that little blurb would pick us up and it would really make us feel good to know that there are a lot of people in this city that have a story that connects them to this house. And so that's part of the fiber 
that, that makes this house such a special home because all of those things are still here. Wonderful memories. Unfortunately, Christopher passed away from complications of cranial lymphoma in January of 2019. He never had the opportunity to live in this house. And while that is heartbreaking, I have to know, and I do believe, his spirit is very definitely here. I believe the Randolph spirit, spirits are here, and I certainly believe that Margaret Lucas' spirit is here. She was called by her grandchildren, Suge, and we had the opportunity of meeting three of her beautiful and delightful Southern ladies, um, her granddaughters, and spend an evening with them, and it allowed us to ask questions about what it was like growing up in this house, and they just shared a wealth of information. And it was fascinating to listen to them talk about the spend the night parties and being over here with Suge and how she loved to have her friends come over and entertain. The Randolphs had used this house to entertain. Mr. Randolph was very, very actively involved in the Democratic Party his entire professional career and actually served as a representative to a number of the Democratic conventions along the way over the years. And so he used the house to entertain not only from a political standpoint, but also in his business as an attorney. My favorite room in the house is his law library, which is the room right next to it. It's a smaller room, the scale is a little bit more intimate, and it's a wonderful place to uh, spend a, a rainy afternoon. To fast forward, I have had the opportunity to host um, a couple of events for two organizations that are very important to, uh, to Christopher when he was alive and certainly to me now. Uh, the first being Piedmont Hospital and the Ladies Auxiliary. I was honored to host the patron party for the uh, Piedmont Ball. Uh, that party was back in December of 19 and that was really the first big event that I had hosted. I hosted the Georgia Trust um, in May of last year when I first moved in. We had opened the house to the Georgia Trust twice before when it was um, under renovation and small groups had come through to see the work as it was in progress. I was also tremendously honored to be able to host the patron party for the 2020 flower show at the Atlanta Botanical Garden um, where I formerly served on the board. They were honoring my aunt this year and it was very, very special to me to be able to do that for her. And as she was leaving the party that night, I was standing in the dining room and she came up to me and she put her hands on me and she said, I want you to know how proud your mama and daddy would be of you. And the waterworks turned on because she could say it and it just went straight to my heart. And so that was so very special that I had the opportunity to do something for this lady who is so special in my life and has done so much for so many people and has done so many wonderful things for our city and our state and our world. Part of our mission too, Christopher and I wanted to use the home to promote organizations that we have special interest in to further the cause. So when, when times change again, and they will, I'd like to open the house up again and, and entertain some more. You know, one of um, the, my favorite things to do is just have a, a small group of friends over for, for dinner and we'll get takeout and um, just sit around and talk and laugh. And this house, has brought me so much peace and so much comfort. I can tell you, I've lived in numerous places throughout my life, but I have never had a house be in my soul and in my heart the way this house is. And this house reminds me a lot, both of my grandmother's house and my mother's house. And my parents believed that home was very, very special. That is a reflection of 
who we are as people. And that shows the love and the care. And it doesn't have to be a big, beautiful mansion. It can be a little cottage in the woods. It can be whatever is special to you. But make your living space special because that's your cloister. That's your respite from the rest of the world. And so for me, in this time particularly, after the loss of my husband and, and having a huge hole in my heart, this house helps fill some of that with the memories and the warmth and the laughter. The Randolph Lucas House was designated a landmark home by the city of Atlanta in 1990. Um, and so I would say that it definitely is probably the, one of the most recognizable homes in the city, um, both because of its prominent location in the past, but also the many times um, it has been photographed and shown in magazines and books over the years. And um, it is just a beautiful classic house, but it's a very warm house. The, the downstairs, the rooms are very expansive. The ceilings are 14 feet and the windows are oversized. And so even on a day when it's overcast, the diffused lighting is so beautiful coming in this house. It just really is very warm and, and very um, gratifying to be here and to spend time here. I'd like to share a few things that um, have transpired um, while we've been working on the house and since the house was finished. Before we finished the house, one of Christopher's Friends from high school sent us this first edition, Peachtree Road. Um, and the author, Ann River Siddons, wrote, for Christopher Jones and Roger Smith, who are giving my heart its house back. Thanks and all best wishes, Ann Siddons. So that's pretty special. So on that one. My good friend, Travis Taylor, has just come out with a book. Whether you live in Atlanta or not, you need to get this book. It's got some great places in it. And um, it's a wonderful guide to our beloved city. Um, near and dear to my heart is number 79, the Randolph Lucas House. I would like to read the opening line Arguments that Atlanta is in danger of tearing down everything that make it unique are seemingly eons old. Case in point, the Randolph Lucas House was once considered the last of its kind on Atlanta's most famous street, Peach Tree. So, thank you to Travis for including our home in this. It's got a lot of other great things in there, so it's, it's a wonderful read. Another honor received the award um, in excellence in preservation from the Georgia Trust. And so this is very, very meaningful and what an honor to be recognized for, for this from the Georgia Trust. So certainly appreciate that. The Atlanta, Atlanta Preservation Center honored us a couple of years ago and um, the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution honored us. And um, this is a very special award because in 2008, Christopher started a Historic Preservation Award here in our neighborhood. And the purpose of the award was to recognize the best restored home or the most compatible new infill home in the neighborhood. And so last year, the board of the Ansley Park Civic Association voted to name it the Christopher M. Jones Award, which is a tremendously high honor, which he never would have wanted, but um, it's in recognition for the relocation and the rehabilitation of the Randolph Lucas House. And a funny story about this when Christopher was in the hospital at one point, I suggested to him that I thought it was appropriate that his name be added to the house, making it the Randolph Lucas Jones house. 
And he looked at me and he said, absolutely not. And I thought, okay, I didn't bring it up again. But after his death and after a period of time, I called my good friend, the president of the Georgia Trust, Mark McDonald, and made the suggestion to him. And Mark said, absolutely his name needs to be on that house. So um, it is now the Randolph Lucas Jones house. And uh, this is the actual certificate uh, from the Georgia Trust. Very, very proud. We did lose a level of our anonymity and certainly in doing the project, um, the joke was it's being done under the watchful eye of everybody in Atlanta. And uh, I, th I think there was a lot of truth in that. This was a labor of true love and true dedication. And probably the question that I'm asked the most is, would I do it again? Absolutely, I would. It is so worth it. And even in the darkest hours and what seemed to be the worst days, somebody would call or send a message and say, just keep going. It's going to be so worth it on the other end. And I can tell you that that has been my experience. It has been so worth it because this beautiful home will stand now. Um, and, and no worries about the wrecking ball. We signed a historic easement agreement with the city of Atlanta. So the house will be here. We had no idea when we were doing this project that it would be Christopher's legacy project. But I can't think of anything that would stand as a legacy to that man than this house because he loved historic preservation. Unbeknownst to me, Christopher had already cleared this with my mother because my mother was going to be moving in with us at some point. And he knew that if he could get her on board, it was a done deal. So. The first day we came out, my mother was with us and we walked all the way through the house. And as we were leaving, she turned around in the foyer, which is immediately behind me. And she looked up and she looked around and she said, well, it looks like home to me. And um, that I think pretty much sealed the deal. <laughs> How could I say no to that? <laughs> and that is historic preservation going full circle. Welcome. Please come in to the Randolph Lucas Jones house. The living room um, is a very, very nice size room, as is the dining room. Two main rooms on the first floor. The ceilings downstairs are 14 feet. The ceilings on the second floor are 12 feet. On the third floor, we took them all the way up to the pitch of the roof, so they go up all the way to 23 feet. So that's quite dramatic on that floor. I have to be honest and say that this is probably my favorite room in the house. This is probably where I spend most of my time. The scale is a little bit smaller, as you uh, can see, but um, I think it's just a great room. Come on in and I'll show you the kitchen. I will also tell you, Christopher, was the cook of the two of us. So Christopher designed this kitchen uh, the way he wanted it. He did not want um, hanging cabinets. He wanted it to be very open and uh, have a very open feel, which I believe that it does. And um, all of the storage space um, was maximized in the uh, drawers and pull-out drawers below the counter. Again, going full circle, uh, we went back to the um, butcher block countertops, which were original to the house. The house originally had the butcher block countertops in the kitchen. And into the dining room. Again, a beautiful sized room, nice and large. Um, I have been pleased to entertain in two different events where we had 80 plus people and the first floor handled that very well. So um, the chandelier is uh, very special to me. That belonged to my grandmother Smith. 
Uh, she found that chandelier on Magazine Street in New Orleans and had it shipped back to Atlanta and electrified at Capitol Electric and it hung in her dining room and then in my mother and father's house and now it hangs in my dining room. So that to me is historic preservation coming full circle, I would say, over three generations. <laughs>